Once upon a time, there was a very rich merchant. He had so many coins that they overflowed out of his pockets. He had three sons and three daughters, whom he loved dearly. The daughters were very beautiful, but the youngest was by far the most striking. She was so pretty and oh so witty. Everyone in the village admired her. They fondly called her the Little Beauty. Her sisters did not like it. They said, "It is such a pity that she is so pretty. We feel green with envy, also jealous and angry." These two sisters were rude and crude. They thought that having lots of money made them better than others. Every day they attended balls, concerts, and parties. Beauty did not attend these events. Instead, she loved to read books and help others. Her sisters would laugh at her. Oh, little beauty, you just don't know a thing. You would never be able to marry a king. You may be beautiful, but you haven't a clue about how to be important and become richer too. One day, everything changed. The merchant lost his fortune. The only thing that remained was a small house in the country. He brought his children there and asked them to work as hard as they could, so that they could feed themselves and make a living. Beauty and her brothers helped with the chores, but the two sisters did not help at all. One day, a special package was coming in the mail for the merchant, so he went to town. The two sisters demanded fancy clothes right away, while Beauty asked for nothing but a rose. Most disappointingly, the merchant was not able to get anything from the package, so he had to return empty-handed. On his way home, he got lost in the forest. Through the trees, he could see glimpses of bright lights. He walked towards the light, and a large palace stood before him. It was decorated with special lights. He entered the gates and found himself in the hall. He ate the delicious food that was laid out on the table, but there was nobody there. It was truly bizarre. He finally fell asleep in one of the beds. The merchant and his family moved to a farm. They had to get used to the tough life there. Ah,、oh, the sun has scorched my skin, and the wind has roughened my hands. Our lovely silk dresses are unpacked, but there are no decent suitors in the village. True, we'll never find suitors worthy of us here. Beauty can find her match here. Maybe a plowman or a gardener. <laughs> Dear sisters, will you help me prepare dinner? Our brothers will return from the field soon. We don't want to get covered with all the dirt. Why don't you prepare dinner by yourself? You're good at it. My sisters don't want to help me prepare dinner. Can you please help? We need some wood to start the fire. Let's make some soup. First, we'll pour water in the pot. Let's put the pot in the stove. Great! While the water is boiling, we'll get some vegetables. This is a sweet pepper. It's also right. This is carrot. This is a tomato. This is a potato. This looks like an onion. Hmm. I can smell the delicious soup, but I'm afraid I'll not get to taste it. I'm setting off in my ship to the city. What presents do you want, my dear girls? Beautiful silk for me, father. A crown studded with gems for me, father. I don't want anything. Please return safely soon. Why, dear? Ask for something, and I will get it for you. Maybe a scarlet rose, if you find one on your way. 
All right, my darling daughters, I'll get everything you want. When the merchant woke up, he saw many fine clothes in the room waiting for him. When he looked out the window, he saw the most beautiful flowers blooming. Who lives here? Could it be a magical fairy? He wondered. Then he went to the hall and found more delicious food waiting for him. He ate some breakfast. When he went outside, he saw some lovely roses. He simply had to take one for beauty. As he plucked one from the bush, he saw a frightening beast when he turned around. Why did you steal my rose? They belong to me, as everyone knows. The beast roared mightily. The beast called the merchant ungrateful and vowed to take his life. I'm so sorry, said the merchant, trembling in fear. I took the rose for my daughter. The beast said that he would forgive him on one condition that the merchant bring a daughter to the palace. But the merchant loved his daughters too much to give any of them up. He did agree, just for the chance of seeing his lovely children one last time. The beast told him to fill an empty chest with whatever he liked and that it would be sent to his house. The merchant filled it with gold. The coins went plink, plonk, plink, plonk as they went in. He left the palace in sadness, but he was happy that he had something to give his children. After a long journey through the forest, he returned home. The merchant saw a rose bush with beautiful roses and remembered Beauty's request. What beautiful roses, but how do I reach them? Help me to reach the part of the garden where the prettiest roses bloom. I can see a way. Thanks for your help. These are beautiful roses. I need to pick the prettiest one for beauty. This one is perfect. Bright scarlet with velvety petals. Beauty will be delighted. How dare you pick my favorite rose? Is this how you pay me back for saving your life? Forgive me, your majesty. I only picked a rose for my youngest daughter. I am not a king. Don't call me your majesty. But this castle is mine, and nobody is allowed to break in here. Please spare me. I have three daughters and three sons. Take this rose and come back in three days. Don't even think of deceiving me. I promise I'll come back. I'll just say goodbye to my children. I shouldn't have come here. What do I do now? The merchant was overwhelmed with emotion when he saw his children. He hugged them all tightly. Oh, my dears, he said. The most terrible thing happened. I got lost in the woods and ended up in a palace where a beast lives. I, I took a rose from his garden and this angered him greatly. He vowed to take my life. I must leave you now. He handed Beauty the rose, but there were tears in Beauty's eyes. Thank you for the rose, father, but you've made my heart sad with this terrible news. Let me offer myself to the monster instead. She had such honor and loved her father dearly. Her brothers jumped in and said, No, no you will do no such thing. We will kill this beast or die trying. The beast is very strong, the merchant warned. That will not be an easy task. And although Beauty's offer is so kind, I cannot allow it. I am old. I do not have long to live. It is I who will give my life. But no matter what her father said, Beauty insisted that she go with him. You cannot stop me, she said. I will come with you and make a plea. This made her sisters happy. Finally, they would be rid of that wretched girl. The merchant was very sad about the whole thing. Then he realized that he forgot about the chest of gold from the beast. When he went to his room, he found it and showed it to Beauty. 
Beauty told her father that while he was gone, two men had proposed to marry her sisters. She said that he should give this fortune to them and send them off in marriage. You see, no matter how cruel her sisters were, Beauty still loved them. She had a heart that was pure and true. She was so caring, and everyone knew. The next day, the merchant and his daughter went to the palace. Soon, they came face to face with the beast. Did you come here willingly? The beast demanded Beauty. The whole room shook when he spoke, and Beauty trembled. Yes, she said. Merchant, you have done your deed, the beast said. You may now leave and never return. The poor merchant was beside himself with grief. He left with a heavy heart. Beauty decided that she might as well use the little time she had left. She decided to walk around and explore the beautiful palace. She saw a door that said, Beauty's Apartment. Inside, there was a library full of interesting books, a piano, and other lovely things. Wow, she could have a wonderful time here forever. She opened a book, and it told her that she could have anything she wished there. In fact, she also found a magic mirror. When she looked into it, she could see her whole family. Beauty was overjoyed. The beast was also very nice. He didn't seem like a monster. He was smart and had a beautiful heart. He did everything he could to keep Beauty happy and content. They would sometimes sit by the fireplace and talk for a long time. Slowly, Beauty stopped fearing him. She greatly enjoyed his company. The beast was so kind, gentle and thoughtful. The castle was very large. Beauty decided to look around. One of the rooms is open. Let's check it. Let's collect the crystals here. I think I saw one like this on the door in the pink room. Maybe there is one behind the curtains? Look behind the frame on the chimney piece. I think I see a crystal under the desk. We have all the crystals for the pink door. Let's open it. We need to find blue crystals now. Look near the vase. Look under the bed. We found all the blue crystals. We can enter the blue room now. I wonder what we'll find in this beautiful room. The stand is over there on the bookshelf. What a beautiful mirror! Ah, uh, isn't this my home? How I've missed it. And here are my beloved sisters. Father, why is he so sad? Is he sick? Beauty spent three months in the palace, and soon they became dear friends. Every day he asked her, to be his wife. She would say, We are friends. This much is true, but I will not marry you. The beast told her that he loved her and that she should never leave him. Beauty agreed to stay as long as she could visit her father now that he was very ill. She knew this because she had a vision of it in her magic mirror. The beast said, You may visit your father. Use this special ring. Put it on your night table when you are ready to go to his house. Once you are ready to return to me, put it on the table again and you will magically come back. But you must return by tomorrow night. Otherwise, I will die from sorrow. That night, Beauty put the special ring on her night table. When she woke up, 
She was with her dear father again. Just then, some trunks appeared with gowns covered with gold and diamonds. They were a gift from the beast. Beauty's sisters came over as well, but they did not look happy. They had gotten married, but their husbands were not very nice. The two sisters were once again jealous of Beauty. Here she was, dressed like a princess, and she seemed happy. They wanted revenge, so they brewed a sleeping potion and gave it to Beauty when she was about to return to the palace. Ha! Now she will be late, and the beast will be so angry. They will be rid of their sister once and for all. That night, Beauty had a dream of the beast. He was dying of sorrow. She instantly woke up. Oh no! She screamed. I must return to the palace at once and save him. She put the magic ring on her table and was instantly transported. Beauty returned home. Her father and brothers were overjoyed to see Beauty happy and fine. The evil sisters also came to see her. Beauty, how good it is to have you back home again. Father, I came to see you all, but I can't stay for long. I promised to return by evening, otherwise Beast would die of grief. I have a potion that will make Beauty sleep for three days. Beauty, I made you a cup of tea. Here, drink it. Thank you, dear sister. We're so glad to see you, Beauty. We were afraid that the Beast harmed you. No, father. Beast has been very kind to me. I live like a princess in his castle. I don't feel well. I'll take a nap and see if I get better. We need to wake up Beauty so that she can get back to the castle soon. Keep the arrow in the green zone by clicking on the ring. Beauty, where are you? Ah, uh, it's night already. I need to hurry back to the castle. Beauty ran into the hall, but the beast was nowhere to be found. She was worried that it was too late. She found him lying in the garden, half dead. He had gotten so upset that he had starved himself. The beast opened his eyes and saw Beauty. He smiled. I give you my hand, she whispered. So you must live to be my husband. Beauty realized that she truly loved the beast. The whole palace lit up with fireworks and music. But suddenly the beast disappeared and she saw a prince. The prince thanked her for putting an end to the wicked fairy's spell that had turned him into a monster. The spell could only be undone when a girl with a pure heart agreed to marry him. Beauty was the only woman kind and generous enough to marry him even when he looked like a monster. Beauty ran around the castle looking for Beast, but she couldn't find him. She remembered her nightmare and dashed to the garden. Beast was lying lifeless on the grass. What have I done? I promised to be back on time but slept away. I need to wake him up. Maybe I should give him some water. Is there something to bring water from the stream? That's right. The pitcher will do. Oh, you're back, Beauty. Now I can die happily with you beside me. No, you must not die. How do I save him? I don't want you to die. I truly love you. But where is Beast? I was the Beast. A wicked fairy cursed me to remain in the monster disguise until a beautiful lady falls in love with me. Will you marry me, Beauty? I agree. Beauty was surprised by all this. But since she truly loved the person he was on the inside, she married the prince. 
During the celebrations, she found her father and whole family there. What a joyous reunion! They had a beautiful marriage and lived for many years. Every morning, Beauty was greeted with a kiss, and they lived in happiness and bliss.